My days are cooler, nights are warmer, and I put the blame on you. Time moves slow, but my heart beats faster. When these eyes are looking right at you, right at you, you give me something to believe in, just what I need in. Uh, did, how much of the Donna Bash uh, interview, speaking of that, because, you know, mm-hmm. I also I'm, I'm listening to this book on leadership um, mm-hmm. and the questions uh, that leaders, good leaders ask. And I, I was as I was walking this morning listening, I was amazed at how few people lean into leadership. Like to me, leadership is a grave responsibility that you should want to earn the right to lead people. And you should be a a good steward of other people. Like you, you can really tell a good leader by the the people that they've led, you know. Mm-hmm. And so I was thinking, even as we're picking the leader of the free world in mm-hmm. in November, what are the criteria that you are assessing in the leader that you want to? You know what I'm saying? Like, is it uh, the way they laugh, or is it you know? You think about Trump. How many people that he had in, on his in his cabinet around him? aren't there now like right. like all of them just about you mean like a, have like a, a vice president maybe like a like yeah, a, yeah, all, like everybody a like there's man. there's no so to me I, I feel like you could tell a lot even when you think about the apprentice and his in his organization his organization is full of his children right not you know what i'm saying not, not a lot of people are there like who's, I mean, it, who's it the says trump, a lot to, who's the trump acolyte that has gone on to become a real estate mogul because they served under him it says a lot about him to me that vice president, that's your one. That's your one. You know what I'm saying? That's supposed to be your dog. Like the vice president, y'all supposed to be rolling together. You can't even run with your vice president again. Like that's, and that's before you get to all the cabinet overturns, all the people that you put in charge of, you know, government institutions that actually ended up bankrupting those institutions, stripping them down for parts deregulating everything you know we're dealing with listeria outbreaks in 2024 that are a result of the the lack of fda oversight that was stripped out of there so like it's it's all the way to the bottom but also at the top man you can't even maintain appearances to be cool with the one dude that you supposed to be cool with like he's just i mean yeah he's he's just garbage i didn't watch most of the uh interview i saw the clips floating around not that i was uninterested in the interview but um, that that whole thing has always felt like uh, um, they're just gonna move the goalpost on her. It has not felt like a, a, a fair. Well, let me uh, let me um. So there's a couple of since we're talking about leadership and Smith. Let me know the clip. Okay, let's let's play. This is this to me captures who Kamala Harris is and why there's a distinct difference between these two candidates. Play the clip, Smith. I'm talking about an era that started about a decade ago, where there is some suggestion, warped, I believe it to be, that the measure of the strength of a leader is based on who you beat down, instead of where I believe most Americans are, which is to believe that the true measure of the strength of a leader is based on who you lift up. That's what's at stake as much as any other detail that we could discuss in this election. And even in that answer, Dana Bash was like, well, because she uh, Kamala Harris said, it, I believe in the last 10 years. Well, I, I, you, Biden Harris was part of the last 10 years. And she was like, no, I'm talking about an error. Right. You know, the, so um, shout out to Chris Evans on Twitter, who I think captured. The, so mm-hmm. so we didn't have to watch it. I, yeah. I was in and out. Um, but I fundamentally and I, I, I started a three uh, a three section tweet that right. I ended up deleting mm-hmm. uh, because I was really I was pissed off that the Harris Walls team gave Dana Bash their first interview. Mm. And as I was writing this, I was like, it feels self-serving because I was mm. trashing <laughs> the, the lack of journalism and you know what the tenants are and how dead journalism is and we have a chance to revive it, but this is, you don't reward people who are doing a bad job to begin right. with. You don't reward them with this kind of interview because now you're validating something that is invalid, completely mm. invalid. The way Dana Bash moderated 
the debate between Joe Biden. That was on her watch, by the way. Joe Biden and Trump. Mm -hmm. She and Jake Chap. Chap they should never get another interview. Right. Ever. And so I didn't want to put something out that looked like, well, I want her to come here, which I do. But right. I was like, anybody, uh, Leslie Stahl wasn't available. Christiane right. Amapur wasn't available. Like, it, they're like a, a thousand <laughs> really good journalists out there that they could have right. gone to. Yeah. And you pick Dana Bash, who's really not a journalist at all. She's a she's a a, a, a news. I, I don't want to call her out her name because I really right. want to. But I was like, it's not her fault. She sucks. It's her right. management's fault for putting her in a position to continue to suck. Like this, this is when good management and leadership goes, hey, you know, she's not really good at this. Right. Let's not reward her, which leads me to believe something else is going on behind the scenes because a lot of these companies, I've been in a room, so I'm just, I'm speaking from experience. It's nothing to do with talent. It's everything to do with who, mm, who ah, it has everything, to, nothing to do with talent. I'm just going to keep it I, let there. Me say, let me say this. Uh, seeing the behind the scenes and working on the behind the scenes of a TV show, our news is a TV show now, right? That's what. That's the number one thing that those channels are interested in is making good TV, which doesn't mean good journalism. Um, like, those are not aligned. Sometimes good journalism is actually low-key boring. You know what I mean? Like, yep. in that... I might ask you about your policy. Your policy might not be sexy. We might not get a sound bite out of this. But would they rather me ask you about, you know, what's your immigration policy? Or would they rather be like, ooh, girl, Trump said you ain't black. What you got to say about that? Ooh, best man hit me first. Like, that's the kind of journalism, quote unquote, that they're getting. And so I, I like I said, I wasn't interested in watching the interview because I know what the product is. And it just makes me, it, as you said, it makes me upset, too, to watch it and be like, this is a waste of an opportunity, not just for the journalist or the news channel or even for the candidates, for the people. These for are the our people. opportunities to learn about these people under some well, level of, of scrutiny and backup and research, because it's not a campaign speech. It's not the same thing as, you know, just coming and doing a rally. You had that opportunity. And what you spend it doing? Asking, oh, Trump said this. What you think? That's that's not you're not doing your job. Listen, I, my second stanza, my three part tweet <laughs> that I deleted said cable news, corporate news treats news like a sporting event, like the way we cover sports. And you can't have there are no two sides. It's not left, right. At this point, there's too much at stake to, to treat this like a damn football game or baseball match where or 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 around the horn. This ain't around the horn or th mm -hmm. th this is not that this is mm -hmm. our future and it should be treated more seriously than we treat sports on ESPN. Preach. But they have that. We got to have a, you know, a Republican. Why? Why? It's yes. not about having a Republican because we don't even have Republicans anymore. You got MAGAs and this is about disinformation, misinformation versus facts. Journalism yes. is always or should be leaning in the facts. This we don't need two sides. There are no two sides to facts. Either I they're facts or they're not facts. Period. Yes. I'm just sitting there like, are you kidding me? Okay. Yes. Yeah. I, re I remember uh, as a sports fan, I remember uh, when PTI started, which I still think is a great show and an institution. Like, no, not yes. to, to Mike and they, they, they kill Mike, Mike Wilbon, Tony, Tony Kornheiser. Yeah, they kill yes. it. And, and they do have for years. But it was when that, that spark hit, you could just see the, the inner workings of like sports change to be like, wait, we need to have people just talking back and forth you know what'll make it even better if they start arguing they should argue back and forth oh you know what better if they like cut each other off oh what if they have a take that's like controversial before they even start the whole discussion and they key on like a few topics right it becomes like lebron versus michael jordan over and over the dallas cowboys over and over and and it's and the problem isn't that it's not tv that works it will get ratings that's that the issue is that it will work. So it just becomes that over and over. And then every show starts to imitate it. And somehow those tentacles branched out down the cable timeline and our news became that. And that's why that news feels so quote unquote, in quotes. That's why cable news feels so familiar to me because it feels like I'm watching first take It's it's right. let's bring on a panel of people. We're going to debate. We're going to argue. Some of these people ain't even qualified, but they're good Come for on. the takes. Like, that's it's, right. Let's, here's a scientist 
And here's a guy that just don't believe climate change. What's his qualifications? He don't believe climate change. There you go. <laughs> and, that, and we putting him on the air and we're going to say, hey, you learned person who went to school for this, who work in this field, who have scientific evidence and data. What's up with climate change? And they're going to tell us why and what the trends are. And we're going to cut to the other guy. And he's going to be like, well, if it's climate, then why is it cold today? If it's global warming, it was only 40 degrees a day. And, and I got to watch this scientist brain explode in, in like with <laughs> like what is I'm not prepared for this hot take stuff. I'm prepared to give my dissertation. I'm prepared to give my research, my my facts. This person is just saying stuff. And then you cut to some host in the middle, won't say no names, but they just sit there and they basically just look at it like your turn to talk. Yep. Not going to correct anything. OK, your turn to talk. Not going to cut it. Everybody upset. Everybody watching. Cut the commercial. That's where we get paid. And that's what it feels like all this stuff is. It's sad to watch a presidential race become this because the scrutiny is not equal on both sides. And the only way to make it a TV show is to give a super high scrutiny to Kamala Harris and her team and super low scrutiny to Trump and his team. And that's what we're watching. And it's driving people crazy. Well, I mean, it's not driving people crazy enough to stop. To Well, actually, they are turning it off. So kudos to everybody that's no longer watching corporate cable news. You are brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. Cause that's the only because that's the only way to stop me it. Me and you follow news for a living, right? That's right. It's sad because even we were like, I'm not watching this. This isn't real. Like, this is not. I know before it happens, it's not going to be real. You're you're going to ask her something dumb. Like Trump says, you only been black for five years and expect her to give you a serious damn answer or hopefully get mad. So y'all right. can have a clip of her getting upset and be like, oh, that's not very presidential. It looks like what Trump said is getting to her. And since she didn't give y'all that, we, we didn't get nothing out the interview because you don't have anything else to go to. It's, it's sad. Child. It is sad. Um, so I'm going to shout out Chris Chris Evans on Twitter, who I follow. He said, I uploaded the transcript of Kamala Harris's interview with Donna, Dana Bash, and I asked ChatGTP to give its feedback on Dana as a journalist. Here's what it said. Uh -oh. Number one, focus on past statements and contradictions. Bash repeatedly pressed Harris on her past positions, such as her stance on fracking and immigration. While it's important to address shifts in policy uh, positions, the emphasis on these questions seemed designed to highlight contradictions rather than provide a platform for Harris to explain her broader policy agenda or the reasoning behind any changes in stance. To your point, just a conflict. Number two, this is Chat GPT. Repetition of right wing talking points. This is the interview. This is what chat GTP spit back out. Mm -hmm. Some of the questions seem to echo right wing criticisms of talking points, such as pressing Harris on Trump's racially charged comments or repeatedly questioning her commitment to become to, to banning fracking. Like question everybody and the phones are back up. Who has ever talked about fracking? Have you ever talked about like in real time? I don't know. No. It, it never comes up. No. You know, right, man, but when, when after you watch a documentary on fracking, that's when you that's the only time <laughs> anybody's ever talked about this. I don't even think I've ever watched a documentary on fracking. Uh, <laughs> these questions, uh, ChatGPT said, could be viewed as attempts to put Harris in the defensive rather than engage in a substantive discussion on policy differences between she and her opponents. Number three, missed opportunities for in-depth policy discussion. Bash could have used the interview to explore Harris's specific policy proposals. That's what Roger just said in greater detail, such as her plans for the opportunity economy. I need to hear more about that personally. Healthcare reform or climate change. Instead, many questions were framed around potential vulnerabilities or criticisms, which limited the scope of the conversation and perhaps didn't provide viewers with a comprehensive understanding of Harris's platform. Oh my goodness, this was really important. You bring, you have the, the first interview and right. there's all these people screaming about, I don't know what she stands for. And Dana Bash, this what right. you do? Yeah, I wanted this to know, we, we want to know about reproductive health care. You know, we want to know about affirmative action. Every day I'm reading another headline about a department, a DEI getting ripped out of some business. Could have asked about that. Like it's, 
um, you know, it's so much stuff. Even like just the intricacies of her plans for home ownership, where it's like, okay, twenty five thousand dollars for how are we gonna pay for that? Boom. Okay, what how, right. this tax right. this tax increase on the wealthy? Let's talk about that. What what are the cutoffs for that? It's not that this information isn't out there, by the way. But I mean, if this is your chance, the the first interview on TV. You want to get her on record saying this stuff in front of the camera. If you have a follow up question or something, then then ask it then. Like if that's the time that you want to make a, a point of being like, oh, I'm going to show you that I know what you're talking about and be like, well, won't it be a challenge to do this? Won't you need uh, Congress to be able to help you with this? That kind of thing. What are you going to do about the Supreme Court? These are issues that all of us care about. My days are cooler. Nights are warmer. And I put the blame on you Time moves slow But my heart beats faster With these eyes I'm looking right at you Right at you You give me something to believe in Just what I need in You're the closest